Read the disclaimer. Doofus. And please contact us through this email address with questions or fan art. Thank you for your support. years we've gotten a lot of great figures out of generations however in terms of its aesthetics it's been how shall i put this stuck in a rut stuck in a rut stuck in a rut stuck in a rut stuck in a rut, stuck in a rut. <laughs> so, uh, mr bulls stuck, in a rut. stuck again yeah that works but fortunately with the announcement of kingdom i think it's safe to say that hasbro has moved on or given the fact that we still have human characters in it, it's a step in the right direction, but nonetheless, a very good step in the right direction. Salutations, denizens of the internet. I'm Firebite27, and let us commence our analysis of Transformers Generations War for Cybertron Kingdom Dinobot. In beast mode, Dinobot turns into a Velociraptor, though not a completely accurate one, as this one is more based on what we thought all dinosaurs looked like back in the 1990s as opposed to what we think they look like now, so there are no feathers. Fortunately, if what I'm going to call the Jurassic equivalent of a fursuit is more your fetish, there are plenty of fan redesigns that portray Dinobot here with more feathers and more of a modern Velociraptor design. Now then, let me be clear, I have a lot to say about why this figure isn't perfect, but first, let me just gush for a bit because there is so much here to love. First of all, the texturing on this figure is immaculate. Like, I don't understand how all these scales and wrinkles look so natural, but it just works for me. Next up, the teeth and tongue are painted. The former isn't really anything special, but the latter is but a rare luxury on mainline chug figures. Which is to say, a nice departure from the normal blank mouth figure. My second compliment is located just beneath the jaw, where we find a segment of his throat is completely spring-loaded so that it fills back out whenever the figure looks directly in front of itself. It's giving me serious flashbacks to the Siege Seeker mold and the little panels on the back of its legs that just sprang out in order to fill up the legs when you weren't bending them. It's really nice, and I love it. Also, let's take this opportunity to randomly appreciate the fact that they gave Dinobot pupils. Which leads me into my next major point, the painted details on this figure. More specifically, the painted texturing on the skin. Again, I don't understand for the life of me how this looks so natural, but it just looks natural and I love it! A natural appearance that is immediately contradicted the moment that the figure falls onto its side, which is a handy segue into all the problems I have with this beast mode. First issue that I have with the dinosaur mode is that, unfortunately, the cap panels won't quite come together. That's it, really. It's just, I wish it would be perfectly squished down to close up that gap. And while we're on the kibble-related subjects, the uh, underside and front of the raptor doesn't really look good. It's full of gaps and a bunch of robot junk. Heck, you can even see the feet poking straight out of the butt ready to provide inappropriate booster engines from the heel spurs of the robot mode. Though while we're here, I feel as though this is a bit more novel than straight up rocket farting. Though if powerful primary propulsion placed permanently in the posterior is more your fetish, fortunately Dinobot can accommodate for that with this little hole in the back for blast effect parts to be placed in. Which neatly leads us into talking about my biggest problem with this figure, the tail. Many people like to claim that it looks like a dog piece, and honestly, I don't really see that. But it is kinda ugly! 
I mean, in some capacity, I understand why it has a mismatched tip as the two sides of the tail unfurl like the wings of a majestic shit colored butterfly, which reveals Dinobot's iconic drill sword. Now then, just to be clear, my biggest issue with the tail is not the color of the sword. I'm saying this because I've seen a lot of people complain that the color of the sword is the issue, however speaking purely from an objective point of view, I can't agree with that conclusion, mostly because if you had made it any color other than brown, or at least the same brown as the rest of the tail, then it still would have clashed and made it look like a penis. The truth of the matter is that the problem isn't the fact that the sword is colored differently from the tail. It's the fact that the sword is visible in the first place. <sighs> you know what, there's no point in me complaining. It's not like there's any previous chug versions of the character that the designers could work off of, and no masterpieces that they could take a frame of reference from. Heck, it's not even like the original toy was able to hide it away in his tail in beast mode. Oh, wait a minute. That's right. The modern chug figure of Dinobot actually does a worse job of hiding away the sword in his tail than the original Beast Wars figure, which is something that I thought was illegal for chug toys to do. And you can't claim that modern figures have had this problem because the Masterpiece found a pretty creative workaround for it. Heck, what the hell was wrong with using that method again? All you need to do was scrap some of the flaps that allowed the tail to articulate, and then you'd be fine. And to hell with it. While I don't have any of these other Dinobots, at least the Universe version also had the ability to store the sword in his tail. And while you can technically solve this issue altogether by just removing the sword, it does mean that one of the best elements of this figure, that being its weapon storage, is made completely and utterly pointless? I don't know, it just feels like there should have been a better tail to store the sword in even if it meant that the outer flaps had to be rubber, or that they had to be rounded off near the tip. I think the point I'm trying to make is that what pisses me off about this tail is that it feels like it has a totally avoidable issue, and yet no one on the design team bothered to fix it. The good news, however, is that designing an upgrade kit to fix this would be easy, because not only are the tail have is not connected with any pins, but you also have the option to just straight up replace the tail using the 5mm port on the back of Dinobot's body. The only limits are your imagination and your capabilities with Blender in order to design a replacement. And it's even compatible with cameras, which means I can now use it to replace my tripod as what I use to record the new episodes of It Figures. You do realize that anyone with even a single functioning brain cell isn't going to buy that this is how you record new videos, right? I'd prefer if you kept your commentary to yourself unless I've specifically commissioned you to do an articulation segment, Maya. Oh, and the tail causes us one final issue, and that is it covers up the only stand port on this figure. Apart from that, my only personal issues with the figure are the fact that its ankles are a bit loose. And uh, there is one more problem that I should mention from an objective standpoint, and that is the hands. The devious digits on this dinosaur are just too, too long, and honestly, I can live with this, but I can see why other people would have a problem with it at the same time. Heck, I can't even see the purpose in extra long digits unless he's trying to model jewelry, or he really, really likes that one very tall vampire from the newest Resident Evil games. Which, I gotta say, Dinobot has some great taste in waifus then! And as a weird bonus, he can even walk like an Egyptian with these weird hands. Which coincidentally leads neatly into the articulation. In Raptor mode, Kingdom Dinobot can open his mouth, look down, move his upper arms into any position, bend his forearms forwards and backwards from the elbows, rotate his hands in any direction from the wrist, bend his knees forwards or backwards, rotate his feet from the ankles in a full circle, bend them along a 160 degree arc, and clench his toes together. To be totally blunt, I kind of expected a little more out of this beast mode in terms of articulation. It's not bad, clearly, but I don't know, something about it just 
feels lacking, especially when compared to Optimus Primal and Cheetor. It just feels like there should be more for this figure to do, like it has more room to pose in more ways, but it just doesn't. Not to mention there's all the other issues that I mentioned, but honestly, this beast mode, it's actually really good. All things considered, and despite all of my complaints, I really like it. Now, I know it probably has sounded like I've been complaining a lot about this figure, but really, I haven't. I've just been talking about it objectively, what flaws it has, and honestly, talking objectively about any figure, at least to me, is extremely difficult to do. Mostly because the internet loves to interpret whatever you say that's slightly negative as hate. There is no room for an in-between, which honestly really sucks and isn't how the world should work. Of course, I know that everything that anyone will ever say ever will be open to interpretation, but honestly, the world ought to get comfortable with nuance cause it is not going anywhere. Anyways, in order to stop myself from going on another long, boring tangent, I love this figure with all of my heart and soul, even in its beast mode. But when you have a figure of a character that you love a lot and is one of your favorites from an entire franchise, you expect it to be perfect in almost every way. Which means that when you inevitably find all of its flaws, they unfortunately become all the more glaring. Anyways, here's Kingdom Dinobots Raptor Mode next to my last review, Beast Machine's Rat Trap, the last figure from Kingdom that I reviewed, Core Class Optimus Prime, the last figure from the Voyager class and the Kingdom line that I reviewed, Cyclonus, the first Voyager class figure from the Kingdom line that I reviewed, Optimus Primal, my last actual Beast Wars review, Transmetal Rat Trap Box Kids Edition, my next review, Studio Series Off-Road Bumblebee, and of course, a standard Kitama, a standard can of sparkling water, and Fraudside. Okay, now that I've finally run out of things to say about the dinosaur mode, Dinobot Terrorize. Correction. Dinobot Maximize! Jumenta. And here we finally have the Dinobot named Dinobot in robot mode. And oh boy, it is really, really, really nice. And just so I don't have to bog down the review with all of my complaints, I hate the accessories, and also I hate the fact that the paint doesn't wrap around the entire knee. The latter is easier to explain because it feels incomplete. Besides, they painted a bunch of other details, such as the golden dino schlong. My issues with the accessories, meanwhile, is that you can't rotate the shield freely like you did in the cartoon. I'm there popping, y'all! Not to mention that I find the two flaps that form the tail to be pretty thin and... Uh, I'm scared about how brittle they'll become over time. And the sword, meanwhile has absolutely none of my hatred directed towards it in any form. <laughs> okay, now that I've thoroughly pissed off bot posting, let me explain why. From a purely functional point of view, there is nothing wrong with the sword. And in fact, there are actually some justifications for why the sword is purple. The box art specifically seems to imply that the sword is in fact a laser. There's also that one infamous shot from Code of Hero, but personally, I've always found this to be pretty piss-poor justification. No, my personal theory is that it's actually enchanted, with looting 3 and knockback 2 specifically. My only other complaints are that the elbows can't hold up any accessories apart from those that he comes with, and also the fact that I kinda had to sand off some of the Paganor to get it to fit into his hand, like it's sort of coming out of his set hand. Also, the metallic orange paint chips easily, and there's no backwards movement to the legs. But apart from that, I don't have anything to whine about. 
Oh, and I guess I could complain that he can't exactly ride a transmetal rat trap like he did in the show like a moped, but I feel like recreating scenes from the cartoons is one of those hairs that I'd rather not be splitting. Let's start gushing from the top. The head is so perfectly Dinobot. The backpack's profile is also incredibly clean and even provides weapon storage. Also, I really love how the chest is designed to piss off people who hate faux parts. Because technically, you do have these flaps here on the sides with zombie eyes that act as the chest, but you also have the dinosaur head there, which means that neither party that hates or loves faux parts can complain. Also, very interesting fact about the head sculpt, it was apparently based off of the CAD models for the Masterpiece figure. Which, I guess, explains why it has so much personality and character packed into it, even though it doesn't have swappable faces. Not that it would really matter anyways, as his neck can't really crane up far enough in order to recreate that one pose from Code of Hero where he destroys the golden disc. That's really my only complaint with the articulation in this mode. Speaking of, Maya! In robot mode, Dinobot can look in almost any direction except for right up above him. He can reach above himself, rotate his arms in a full circle from the shoulder, rotate his arms at the biceps, bend his arms at the elbow, he can rotate his hands 360 degrees from his wrists, bend his wrists in the same 160 degree arc, clench his fingers together, rotate his torso from the hips, kid his legs out in basically any direction except backwards, rotate his legs from the thighs, bend his knees, pivot his ankles sideways up to 90 degrees, rock his ankles forwards along a 135 degree arc, and fold in his heels. In stark contrast to the dinosaur mode, the articulation on Dinobot's robot mode is amazing. Well near flawless, actually. And in all honesty, I am slightly taken aback that this figure is as amazing as it is. Not to mention that this figure didn't really strike me on the QC front. And naturally, when I told this to my friend Stop Motion Reviewer, his immediate response was, What sorcery is this? And, um, the only response I have to that question is, Pure luck? Anyways, here's Dinobot next to Rat Trap, Optimus Prime, Cyclonus, Optimus Primal, Transmetal Rat Trap, Off-Road B, a standard Kutama, a standard can of sparkling water, and Fraudside. Before I started filming this episode, I had a bit of a hard time deciding whether or not I'd actually review this figure. Not because it's bad, but because... Part of me is scared that my bias towards the character would sort of override my ability to score it objectively, but honestly, this is a really solid figure. If it weren't for all the gaps in the beast mode and detail, I'd say that it would be a perfect 10 out of 10, but right now, as it is, I'm gonna have to go with a 9.5 out of 10, which is still a really good score and means that I definitely recommend that you buy it. But it is... it's got some problems, I'll just put it that way. And now that we're done talking about the figure, please remember to like this video, share it with your friends, of course if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, and ring the notification bell to get some notifications on when the, my videos come out, and also go down to the description and support me on Patreon. I just introduced a $3 tier which allows you to get early access to reviews, and the rest of the tiers come with special perks that you can take advantage of. Go to the link in the description and just... Go to my Patreon and support me. That being said, this is Firebite27, over and out.